I already signed up for my test and I signed up for the November one. Okay, great. Um, so I'm excited, but at the same time, a little nervous. Of course, of course. So you got just about a month remaining. Uh, what are your biggest concerns or challenges that you're facing in this final month? I think the main thing is uh, timing, uh, especially for the logic games. Um, I feel like there's some games where it takes 10 to 15 minutes to complete a game. Ooh. So that makes me a little ner- ne- just nervous. Like I know how to do the games, but it just takes more than eight minutes. Um, right. So I think that's the main thing right now. Um, and also with the reading comprehension, like I feel like uh, for the last time we spoke, uh, I've been learning more about like reading for reason- re- reasoning and structure, for mm-hmm. the structure. So that, that was a big change, but it's still like, I feel like it takes more than the normal three minutes. Right, right, right. Okay. And um, what would you think about potentially taking the LSAT in January just to allow a bit more time to work on those areas? I was thinking about it. I haven't decided. Uh, I mean, I'm aiming for at least a 165, but I'm also scared to send my application kind of late too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand. Uh, the good news is that January actually isn't late at all. It's mm-hmm. right in the middle of the cycle. It mm-hmm. used to be that January might be on the later side, but that's no longer the case. The cycle has extended. So if you're thinking about November versus January, and your results aren't where you'd really like them to be, two mm-hmm. more months, two additional months of studying could make a massive difference. That mm-hmm. would be well worth holding off on taking the LSAT until January. Mm-hmm. Well, you even recommend taking the two of them, like November and the January one? That is one option. It's not a bad option. You could also consider simply just postponing the LSAT from November until January, because if your practice test results aren't where you'd ultimately like them to be by November, there's not a whole lot of reason to go ahead and take it. There is Mm -hmm. an LSAT retake limit. You are spending money on the fees for the exam as well. And Mm -hmm. so there's not really a whole lot of benefit. Like, yes, you get the experience of taking the actual test, but you could do a test in Law Hub and it's pretty much the same. Of course, there's not Mm -hmm. proctoring, but I don't think it's worth using up a take and having it on your record if you are pretty confident it's not where you'd ultimately like it to be. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's the main things with the timing, especially for the logic games, but I feel more way more comfortable with the logical reasoning um but yeah i think think that's the main thing good good well you know what you have to work on you want to speed up on games speed up on reading comp is there anything that you haven't yet done that you think would benefit you in those areas um i haven't done i will say just for the for the logic games i feel like i I feel like I spent a lot of time with the logical reasoning and then I moved to the reading comprehension, but I, I, I don't think I have put a lot of like focus on the games. So I think mm-hmm. that's why probably. Right. Well, that's a big thing you could work on with those additional two months between November and January. I mean, speaking now in October, you've got almost three months to work mm-hmm. on games and reading comp. And so when we look at what could you be doing in games to speed up, are there certain game types or certain approaches you haven't yet used? Um, I think, well, I feel like uh, right now I'm good at, at the auditing games. Um, but when it comes to more of the advanced ones or the group games is when it takes a little more time. Um, so I honestly don't know how can I, because I know the concepts, I think it's more like practice. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could you could do individual time sections, which will give you a good cross section of all the different game types. You could also drill games by type, so work specifically on 
advanced ordering games or grouping games and just isolate the concepts and templates that typically come up in those areas. How would you recommend like doing that if I decided to take it in January, like to study for those two two months and a half for, for the games, but also I don't want to like forget about the logical reasoning. So now I feel comfortable with that section. Yeah. Uh, if I put my focus all in games and then I forget about logical reasoning. Of course. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't leave out logical reasoning entirely, but you could set up some kind of ratio where you spend 40% of your time on games, 40% on reading comp, and 20% on reasoning, since reasoning doesn't need as much work. Mm -hmm. How many hours do you recommend? Because I also work. So that's also kind of hard for the next two months. Yeah, sure. So for anyone, you're working Mm full-time? Okay, so if you're working full-time, then I would typically say maybe 10, 15 hours a week of studying for the LSAT do more on the weekends, less during the week. You could do during the week weekdays when you have work, you could potentially do either an hour before work, an hour during lunch, or an hour after work or some combination of those. And that's more than enough to do on a busy work day. But then on the weekends, I typically recommend waking up early and knocking out at least three to four hours mm-hmm. around in, in the first part of the day. And then the rest of the day could be your free time to do whatever you want to do. That's, of mm-hmm. course, you can mix and match based on what, what works best for you, but those are just some ideas. Okay, yeah, that works. Yeah, because I've been, yeah, with the full-time and plus studying, I think it has been a lot. That's, I think that's why I'm like, oh, I just want to take the November to get over that, but I, I can see how like, like just more practice will help. Sure, yeah, a lot of more practice and more time to devote to those areas that you know need additional work can make a massive difference. I mean, it sounds like you already know there are certain things that you haven't yet done that you could do that would help a lot to improve your understanding. Mm-hmm. Another thing that for the for the reading comprehension, I know that I'm also still trying to get uh, used to instead of used to reading in for reasoning and structure. Uh, so, do you have any tips to transition from just reading normally to reasoning and structure? Yeah, sure. So there are a couple of things I recommend looking for in reading comp. I recommend looking for the viewpoints presented, which Mm -hmm. are opinions, hypotheses, essentially conclusions. Then look for who, if anyone, is advocating those positions, so people or groups of people. And Mm -hmm. additionally, the evidence being presented for any of those given viewpoints. So this would be details and supporting examples. So as you're reading, you categorize what you're reading into each of those different groups. Again, viewpoints, advocates, who is advocating a position, and then evidence, those three things. When you're reading viewpoints, you slow down. That's really the most important thing to take away from the passage, especially if they are presenting the author's opinion. When you Mm -hmm. see the evidence, you can speed up Just note where it appears, and you'll go back and find those details when you need to. Hmm. Okay. uh, Yeah, I think sometimes I tend to slow down for the evidence, just to want to, like, make sure I have everything. So, yeah, that's a good tip. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Yeah, I think that's the the main thing that I've been thinking about timing. do you have any tips about like uh, uh, for the reading comprehension with timing? Yeah, so when you're doing your, that, that initial read of the passage, of course, as I've said before, you do want to ideally be able to read that passage in about three minutes. And so mm-hmm. one way you can speed up is to spend less time on those nitty-gritty details, the evidence, during your initial read. A lot of times students will get bogged down trying to understand every single nuance of that evidence when it's just a lot to absorb. I would recommend speeding up during those parts of the passage, knowing that you can always go back and find those details when you need to, to help you solve a particular question. 
Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that with the slowdown for uh, the viewpoint and conclusion, speed up for evidence. Great, great. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, yeah, I think that's the main thing I'm trying to, uh, and for the logical reasoning, I usually get like 20 questions done, um, but I'm, sometimes I have a hard time like finishing the whole section. Uh, do you have any tips for that? Yeah. So this is a pacing idea, a pacing strategy here, knowing that the logical reasoning questions are presented in a general order of difficulty. Ideally, you will go faster on the questions earlier in the section, mm -hmm. allowing you to build up a time bank that you can then apply to the tougher questions that come later in the section. So one benchmark might be to spend approximately 10 to 12 minutes on those first 10 questions. So then you'll have a lot of extra time later for the harder questions that really need it. Will you recommend, I haven't tried this, but uh, I was just thinking about this, uh, starting first from like 20 or 15 to 26 or 25, and then do later the easier questions. I've heard people suggest that before but I don't recommend it because those are the hardest questions. And because every question is worth the same amount, you don't want to spend, you don't want to start with the tougher questions, risk getting bogged down on them, and then never mm -hmm. get to the easier questions, which have, you're more likely to get correct. You're going to have a higher mm -hmm. accuracy on the easier questions than the harder ones. So mm -hmm. I would say do the easier ones first, lock up those points, build your momentum and morale, with the mm -hmm. confidence that you're getting questions right. And then if you have less time later for the hardest questions where your odds are lower anyway, it's not mm -hmm. as big a deal. Okay, yeah. I haven't tried the other one, but I was just wondering if I should try it. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can always experiment with anything, but I would definitely recommend that your default approach be do the questions in the order given, lock up the easy points, if you come across something later in the passage that's tough, you can know and you're not really making progress, you risk getting bogged down. I would just flag that question, skip it, and hope to come back to it later. Okay, thank you. Uh, how many uh, practices do you recommend before the test? Ideally, at least 10 full length timed exams. How many have you done up to this point? Like four or five. Okay. Yeah, well, you'll have plenty, a lot, a lot more time to do a lot more practice tests. And of course, going for January, you have even more time. I mean, I say 10 mm -hmm. as a minimum. If you could do mm -hmm. 15 or 20, assuming that you have them properly spaced out, meaning maybe doing just one or two a week, not on mm -hmm. consecutive days, you'll be able to get a lot done between now and January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, that's full, full exams or just section. I'm talking about full sec full full exams. So full, exam. full four section timed exams that mirror what you'll be seeing on test day. Okay. So it's the two sections back to back, then a 10 minute break, then two more sections back to back. Okay. Um yeah, thank you. I think that's the, my main question is, uh, for that I have. Uh, just for preparation. Uh, yeah, I think I'm probably going to push it to January. Okay. Um, just because it, it feels more that I can practice more and focus more on the games, especially. Great. I think it's the game section. Uh, I'm not sure, but I, I think that's what I Google it. But you can have like at least like five, no, I mean, 20 questions run to get 160 plus, right? It really, it too. really. I mean, if you look on the the Law Hub raw score conversions, you'll be able to see exactly how many questions you can get wrong for a given exam. It varies mm -hmm. from exam to exam. Some raw score conversions you'll see are from the old LSAT format, not the new one. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful when you're looking to match things up. So I'm not going to give any blanket generalization about raw score conversions because okay. it it would be too easy to to tell you something that could be misinterpreted. So mm -hmm. when you, for any exam that you complete, let's say the next full length practice test that you do, whatever it is, if, let's say it's exam number 80, you could take mm -hmm. exam number 80, 
then look up the raw score conversion for that one and you'll see exactly how many you could have gotten wrong. But practice test 80 had four scored sections while the new online LSAT only has three scored sections. So this mm. creates some of that confusion. So I recommend looking at those conversions specifically. Okay. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, it just I was just thinking about it because when I do a section, I'm like, okay, how much more time do I have? Should I skip a game or should I? I think that's what I was thinking. Yeah. When we, given that you're aiming for 165 plus, you're going to want to do all four games and all four reading comp passages. You're not going to want to skip any questions. It's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always hesitant to recommend skipping anything for someone aiming for a, a 165 or above because you really just need to have a lot of questions correct. And given mm -hmm. that most students are not going to get every question right that they attempt, you're going to have some questions that you get wrong. Mm -hmm. To get some questions wrong and also leave some blank, it just drops the accuracy too low. So I'm going to recommend working on your pacing a lot over these next couple of months. Okay. Yeah, that's the main thing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I think that's my main question. Of course, Fatima, my pleasure. If anything else comes up, you know, just let me know. I'm happy to help. And of course, we'll be in touch as you prep for the January LSAT. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.